In my videos, I've been recommending the website rabbitears.info to locate your local TV stations and help you choose what type of antenna you will need to receive them. Want to know how to use the site? Let's hop to it. RabbitEars.info is a powerful website for locating the transmitters in your area, but it does a lot more. Unfortunately, it's not the easiest website to navigate or understand, so some of my viewers have asked if I can do a tutorial explaining how to use it. I'm going to take you through the basics of using this site and show you the things that most of you will want to know. There will be a lot of other features that the more advanced antenna user can access, but I'm not going to dive into those here. I'm opening up rabbitears.info. The main page has a lot of choices for you, but we are only interested in this one, Signal Search Map. Click on this and it will open up this map. Although it shows all of North and South America, it will only display data for the US and Canada. Sorry to all my viewers south of the border, you will have to find another information source, as will my overseas viewers. In the lower left corner of the map, type in your address. This will work in most cases, but sometimes it won't find your exact location, so you may have to start by putting in just the town or city you're in. Alternately, if you know your location coordinates, you can use them instead. Just go to the lower box and type in your latitude and longitude. Back on the map, hit search and the view will change to your vicinity. You can use your mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Hit this bar and a pushpin will appear on the map. If you need to, you can click on the pushpin and move it around until it's right over where you want it. Back in the lower search box, you can make a couple of adjustments. Set how far you want to search the stations. The default value is 60 miles, and that's usually a pretty good place to start. You'll be able to change this number later on. The default setting for your antenna height is above ground is 30 feet. Try to input a number that's as close to the actual height as possible. An accurate number will give you the most accurate results. I'll put in 18 feet here. When everything is set, hit the go button and a couple of seconds later you will be on the results list page. To the left is the parameters of the search and to the right is the target map and at the bottom is the station search list. At the bottom of the parameters box, change the hide off air setting from no to yes. This will populate the results with only the current on air stations. To explore the target map, click on the expand button. This will give you a map based on compass headings and you can print out this page as a handy guide for aiming your antenna. The color coding in this map and throughout the site is simple with green representing a good signal, yellow or gold is fair, red is poor, and gray is bad. This map's color pattern defaults to transmitter field strength. If you want to change it to, let's say, distance, you can go back to the parameters box and change it like this. You can also sort by other parameters such as signal power, true direction, or magnetic direction. For most situations, you can just leave it at this default setting. Notice on the target map that if the transmitter towers are very close or on the same tower, you may not have all the station numbers displayed. Now let's go back to the results list. If you click on the current station search map, you will pull up a handy overlay of the transmitter towers on your local area map. It's also color coded based on signal strength so you can see some transmitters relatively close to each other have different reception strengths. When you click on a square, it will display a station name and the actual radio frequency it transmits on. More about that later. This map is very handy for locating your favorite stations. Scroll up and click on the current station search list and the channel list will appear again. You can see all the possible stations in your selected range are listed here. Let's look at the second line listing for WRAY TV. In the first box, the station is listed as channel 30-1 and that's how it will display on your TV. The second number in parentheses is the actual radio frequency, abbreviated as RF, that the station broadcasts on. I know it's kind of confusing, but you can see that the display channel and the broadcast channel numbers are rarely the same. In most cases, that doesn't matter to you, but it might, and here's why. 
If you're unaware of it, TV signals are broadcast in both VHF and UHF frequencies. An antenna for one of these frequency bands may not work well with the other, especially if you're trying to receive a more distant or lower powered station. The first thing to remember is VHF broadcasts on RF frequencies from 2 through 13, while UHF is 14 and above. On the channel list, let's go to channel 17 WNCN. Although it displays as channel 17, which you would assume is a UHF channel, it actually transmits on VHF channel 8. Nice, huh? So let's get back to reading the channel list. On the listing for WRAY TV, you can see it's an affiliate of the TCT network and it's located in Wake Forest, North Carolina. It's also 16.1 miles from my inputted location and it's at 232.9 degrees actual direction or 242.1 degrees on a compass. The signal margin is a solid 65.86 decibels and the signal is listed as good. This station is so strong at this receiving location that you could probably pick it up with just the length of coax or even just a paper clip. If you click on the station call sign, it pulls up a separate page that has a whole bunch of information, most of which you probably don't care about. But it does list the broadcast video resolution and any sub-channels that are associated with each station. WRAY doesn't have any substations, but the PBS station, Channel 4, has four of them. Go back to the list again and you'll see this little symbol. Click on it and it gives you another coverage map. Unfortunately, you can see that this map is actually for WUNC Channel 4, not the selected WRAY Channel 30. Although this set is pretty accurate, I guess nothing's perfect. On the list, click on the distance number. This is an interesting display that pops up. On the left, you can see the height of the transmitter tower and the dotted line of sight that's aimed at your inputted antenna height and location. The green line is the terrestrial interference that is between both points. For this channel, you can see that it's a clear shot and easy to receive. As a comparison, let's pick the first station in the poor category, WMYV from Greensboro. Clicking on this gives a whole different result. You can see that the green line actually blocks the signal, but there is a second blue line that angles around the interference and gets to the antenna. This is caused by diffraction or reflection of the TV transmission. I'm not going to get into that here, but let's just say that it can allow you to pick up signals that would normally be blocked. So that's your tutorial. Now that you know the basics, you can play around and see what else you can do. Or you can just use it to find your local stations. That's what it's there for. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to high five the like icon, jingle the bell, and go ahead and subscribe. I'm not sure what I'll be doing next, but until then, keep watching TV.